your CHV are turned up on site, we need to remove some shipping packaging. So things to bear in mind, obviously I'm in a training room here, you'll need to wear appropriate PPE for wherever you are on site. So we need to remove the actual fin guard protector. So we need to have two little bits of foam need to be removed to stop the actual guard from hitting the fins, but now it's all in place, we can remove those. And the other thing we need to remove is the compressor fixing plate. So the idea is fixing plate is so the compressor is held still whilst we're moving from A to B. Now it's all in place, we need to remove that fixing plate. To do that, we need to remove this cover and this cover, and we need to remove the compressor cover as well. And I'll show you how to take that fixing plate off. So now we've got the shipping brackets all removed. What we next do is pull in that power and make sure the power supply is all correct. So we're checking for the power supply. All starting with Earth. We could go between Earth and Phase 1, Earth and Phase 2, Earth and Phase 3, and then Earth and Neutral. And then we work with Neutral across the phases as well. After we've done that testing work, we're then going to set up the dip switches to suit the specific site. So starting off with our Earth side. So Earth to Phase 1. And we're seeing around about 240 volts. On to phase two. Again, around about 240. Phase three. Again, around the same mark. And then between my neutral and my earth, I should be saying next to nothing. There we go. And then we go from the neutral and check between those and the phases. So phase one and neutral. So around about 240 volts. Neutral and phase two. Again, about 240. Phase three in neutral. And there we go, that's good. Arguably, you could check between the phases as well, just to make sure it's all fine. So again, get about 420 odd there. Should be about 415, we should be seeing really. And L1, and L3. And then we could do between phase two and phase three. And just all that little bit of double checking. That's it, all done. So I just want to go through the boards with you so you give me an idea where everything is. So we've got a supply coming in. Then we've got our noise filter board. We've got a rectification board here. At the top here is the board for controlling the fans. You've got the main inverter board in the middle, which is controlling the speed of your compressor. We've got your communications board. And here we've got the control board with our dip switches on, which we'll be playing about with. So on the control board, be aware, line with the hatching. Everything on this side is high voltage. Everything on this side is low voltage. So it's all nice and safe to work on this side with our dip switches. It's all control voltages, so very low. So what we're going to go through next is doing initializing. Where we initialize the unit is on SW7, we put on dip switches one, two, three, and four. And you see the display there changes to the four Fs. We then press the enter button at the bottom. Let that go. And now it's a bit like turning the keys in the ignition. This is getting the heat pump set up for doing some work and it's putting everything into its zero position. So once the unit's finished zeroing everything back into its original positions, You'll be able to tell because the unit will stop making little clicks and clacks. Um, then you can put these dip switches back into the off position. So SW7, number one, two, three, and four, back into the original position, and you'll see the display changing back. That's that done. So next we're looking at the addressing. So this allows us to identify the actual modules unit. It's really important when we've got a cascade system. So on this particular site, uh, we actually need to address it as nine. So that's what I need for this particular site. It'll vary depending on your site as well. Uh, if you're not too sure, have a look at the schematic drawings or by all means get in touch with our pre-sales heating team and we can go through that as well. For the addressing to be taken, by the way, you will need to power the unit off and power it back on again if you do change the address. When you do power it off, leave it off for a couple of minutes before you power it back on. Mm -hmm.